Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of The Last Harvest with me, Damien Dumar, publisher of The Last Harvest by Lucien Mars, available on Amazon in physical format, in audiobook format, and in digital Kindle format. So I do this podcast every week to look at things that are going on in the news and tying them into the narrative that is unveiled in The Last Harvest by Lucien Mars. So for those of you who don't know what the book is about, the book is about a plan by the global elite under the influence of the Nebu Gray extraterrestrials to commit genocide and wipe out 90% of the population of this planet and hybridize and enslave the rest. And this plan is supposed to commence in 2025, which is very close by. And when we look at the impending World War III that's on the horizon. Some would even argue we're already in World War III, such as Jordan Peterson and myself. Um, it's not too hard to envision that uh, a goal of eliminating 90% of the population is unattainable. It's clearly very attainable because war is one of the big vectors of depopulation, along with things like starvation, viruses, and the like. So the material in The Last Harvest also covers the extraterrestrial history of this planet, who created human beings. The book talks in great detail about the Divine Father, individual you would call God, if you could even call him an individual, but I'll refer to him as a Divine Father. Some will call him the Creator. Some will call him God. So the book, The Last Harvest, was actually written at his behest, believe it or not, because the events that are described in the book of Revelation are coming to pass. What a lot of people don't realize about the book of Revelation is that the book of Revelation is the only book in the Bible which has not been corrupted, and it was never corrupted because a curse was attached to it by the Divine Father. So anyone who corrupts that book will fall under the dominion of that curse. Whereas all other aspects of the Bible, as well as all other religious texts, were corrupted specifically by Satan, <clears throat> among others. The Anunnaki were another factor that corrupted these religious texts. So while the book The Last Harvest and myself will talk a lot about the Divine Father, we're not Christians at all. As a matter of fact, we're very anti-Christian. Uh, we're anti-all religion and Christianity is included in that category. So some people will complain, say, well, the last harvest really has a lot of anti-Christian sentiments. So in this video, I hope to begin to address why there are these anti-Christian sentiments exposed in the last harvest. And um, I was serving the internet. There's this guy here, a former Navy SEAL by the name of Chad Wright. He has a channel called, uh, I think it's called Three of Seven Project. And the man, of course, was a Navy SEAL, becomes a, a born-again Christian, not realizing that when Jesus says in the Bible, you must be born again, he was talking about reincarnation and not talking about what Christians consider being born again. And uh, Chad Wright, I think, even now operates as a preacher thumping around with his Bible, walking on stage, not realizing he's already damned and bound for hell. So the question is, well, how can you say that? Well, he violates, thou shalt not kill. He joins the military. He goes off to foreign lands to kill people he doesn't even know. This is a huge sin. Now, I know that I will probably piss off a whole lot of people who are all about, well, I'm a veteran, I served this country, well, it doesn't really matter. I hate to tell you this, but it's the truth. You, human beings were never meant to go to war. And the fallen angels, such as Azazel, who taught humans how to take up arms and fashion weapons and go to war, were punished most severely by the Divine Father. Human beings were never meant for war. They're terrible at it. They have no chance against the other extraterrestrials out there who regularly are experts at warfare, and 
Humans were just never meant for that. That's why the commandment in the Bible is thou shalt not kill. <coughs> if you violate this commandment, you're in serious trouble, and it doesn't matter if you did it for your country or whatever your story is. Uh, if you want to have an example of what a quote-unquote good Christian would be, you would look at the Amish. They're pacifists. They live very simply. They embrace the land. They all help each other. That's more the vision that the Divine Father had for humanity, which has gone astray. And um, I think a lot of soldiers don't want to acknowledge that they joined the military because they like to kill. They want to kill. Now, that's certainly not everybody. Some people may join the military because they need money for college or they want to escape going to prison for a crime they committed or they don't have a better job or something like this. But most of them are going there deep down because they want to kill. And it's easy to dress things up and these glorious notion of, oh, I'm fighting for the country, I'm, I'm protecting you and your freedoms. But the reality is that the United States, when was the last time the United States was actually under a threat? Are you telling me that a bunch of goat herders in Afghanistan were really a threat to the United States? So what were we doing there? What were all you soldiers doing there? I'm sure if you talk with a lot of soldiers, honestly, they'll realize, why were we in Afghanistan? This was ridiculous. But by then, it's too late. So the smartest thing that one can do if one wishes to preserve one's soul is not to get drafted. Should there be a World War III coming up? Don't go. What are they going to do to you? Throw you in jail? Better to do time in jail than to do time in hell. I can tell you that right now. When I was a child, my biological father told me a story he grew up in Germany under the Nazis. He was born in 1930. And even he said, back then when the Germans were drafting people, you didn't have to go. But everyone was so eager to go to war. They could not wait to go fight, not thinking about what the consequences of it would be. And he told me a story about one friend of his who was called down to the draft hall, and he simply refused to join. And what did they do to him? Did they shoot him? Did they put him in prison? No. They shamed him and sent him home. But chances are he's not in hell right now. So who cares about the shame and all those soldiers who shamed him? Where are they right now? Ask yourself that. Because they're all there violating thou shalt not kill. This is uh, not a politically correct or comfortable fact, but people need to know this reality. Um, so I want to share with you a story here because Chad Wright tells this very funny story uh, about demons. And then I will explain what's really going on. And I will use Chad Wright as an example of everything that's wrong with Christians and why most of them will go to hell. Strong statement. Stick with me. Let's listen to what he has to say. Guys was a Christian. And we're staying in this uh, place beginning. overseas, and one it was only uh, there was four of us. One of the four guys was a Christian, and we're staying in this building. And the one that was a Christian, he started reading his Bible every evening. <laughs> Sounds crazy, bro. Uh -huh. But when he started doing that these weird things started happening within this place we were staying. Uh -huh. And they were, I call them now, it was, it was really an evil thing. So the things that were happening were causing fear and discontent and discomfort within our group. So he starts reading his Bible. He obviously <laughs> aggravates this spiritual presence, this other spiritual presence that is dwelling in this place. Right. You're talking about paranormal. Paranormal activity. activity. Okay. So, right. yeah, I remember the first thing, like, uh, I'm laying in bed one night and something hits my door and I hear, like, singing up and down the hallways of this place where we were staying and I get up and everybody's passed out and it it may, it scared me. What like, kind of singing? Um, it, it didn't, I don't remember it as sound, it, it was not words, it was more just like tones. Uh -huh. as, as the days progress, these, this paranormal activity continues to happen, 
and also our moods as like as as teammates this spiritual presence was bearing down on our moods and and it got to the point where it was affecting our interactions with each other and you know the way we felt about each other and just really just getting us in a rut man so you're not the only one who's experiencing so this, eventually right. after you know after a week or so you you got you got four navy seals sleeping in the same room together because they're uh, they're freaked out about what's going on yeah and they should be see chad wright he's really dumb i hate to say it like most of these christians are as a matter of fact the only people dumber than christians are satanists they're really stupid. Uh, and if you read The Last Harvest, there's actually quotes there from the writings of Satan himself. And Satan, in his own words, says that he spits upon those who worship him. So, again, how dumb are you to worship someone who spits upon your worship of them? Uh, anyway, what Chad Wright doesn't realize is that him and all his Navy SEALs are damned at the moment that they join the military and start killing. And he is a killer. You can see it in his eyes. Uh, they, they do all this killing, and so they're already marked. The moment that you commit murder like this, especially soldiers on battlefields engaging in warfare, you become the target for all kinds of demons, vampires, entities, who now have open reign to do what they want to you because you have no longer, you are no longer protected. In other words, you violated the commandment, thou shalt not kill. It's open season on you now. This is what happens. So Chad Wright and all these Navy SEALs are marked by these entities. And what really pissed off these entities is the absolute hypocrisy of one of these stupid killers thinking that even though he's a killer, he is somehow still a Christian, taking out a Bible and reading it. I mean, if anything upsets some of these entities, it's the utter hypocrisy of this. And of course, they come and harass you because Navy SEALs aren't badass when it comes to some of these entities. They won't stand a chance. Even Chad Wright, in another interview, went into more detail about how fast they all broke, broke down. So these guys are supposed to be so tough, their minds so strong, they can go through Hell Week and all this, break down in seconds when attacked by these entities. And we're not even talking about what extraterrestrial soldiers can do to them. We're just talking about these entities now. So they're reading from this Bible, attracting all these entities to get really upset, and the entities come and harass them. But what they don't realize is he thinks now, oh, because I'm a Christian, because I'm saved, somehow I've escaped this. No, when you die, you go to hell. These demons already have claimed you. These vampires have already claimed you. Whatever their classification is, you have committed murders, and you're going down. And Jesus will not save you. Why would he? That's completely absurd. And that Christians believe this, that they can run around killing and do whatever they want, and then think it's okay because they got saved or whatever they want to call it. No, you didn't get saved. You damned yourself through your own free will actions. You went against the commandments of God. And now just to show you just how messed up this Chad Wright is as a person, let's take a look at what he says here, where he talks about Donald Trump, and he correctly points out that all of these Trump fanboys are trying to put the bullet back in the gun and claim that his comments about a bloodbath were taken out of context and about the auto industry. But wait for the twist on this. Talking about the auto industry. I can't believe you said this, Chad. You've been fooled by the mainstream media. You went with that narrative, this and that. I'm going to pander to your stinking stupidity here. I have the transcript right here. We're going to listen to this speech together, and we're going to see, was Donald Trump talking? Anyway, we all we don't have to go through it again, but I want to get to the ending here. And look at this guy's face. Let's just blow this up. Look at this dude's face. Look at his eyes. He's insane. He's insane. He's a killer. He's hellbound. He is the typical Christian hypocrite. Now, 
Wait till you hear his final comment. What you want him to hear, and you will only understand things the way you want to understand things. Because you are that ignorant. And I, 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 am, I am ashamed to literally call you my countryman. All that being said, I love Donald Trump. Donald Trump, 2024. There you go. Donald Trump promises a bloodbath, a revolution, a coup, a civil war if he's not elected. Promises that if he's not elected, this will be the last election. He wishes to install a Christian fascist theocracy, violate the Constitution. Donald Trump is the Antichrist. For those of you who don't understand it, he is literally possessed by Satan. And here is a Christian who is saying that he loves him and still will vote for him. So, you love Satan. You're voting for Satan. Can the damnation be any more complete? And this guy, this Chad Wright, is indicative of so many Christians in this country. I mean, can you think about it this way? Mike Pence, who was Donald Trump's running mate, and probably one of the most exemplary, stereotypical Christians there is, the moment that he doesn't wish to help Trump to do anything illegal, Trump demands that he be hanged. And all these Christian supporters carrying their Trump and Jesus signs, also running around with the news, trying to hang an exemplary Christian. Who would want to be a Christian? Think about it this way. Who is responsible for the death of more Christians than anyone? Other Christians. Don't believe me? Go into Wikipedia. Look up all the wars in Europe that were fought between Catholics and Protestants. And it's just Christians killing Christians. Look at the Inquisition. Christians killing Christians. Who would want any part of this? Does this sound to you like this is what Jesus wanted? I mean, just think about this. I mean, this guy is talking about how ignorant everyone is, and he's probably the stupidest person there is, except for a Satanist. So Jesus wanted you to join the Navy SEALs and commit murders, right? He wants you to vote for the Antichrist. He would want you to subvert the Constitution and bring in a Christian fascist theocracy into this country? Really? Man, and this is, this is problematic. I really don't know what to say when I hear things like this from guys like this. But, I mean, in the end, it doesn't matter. They're all already judged. They're already damned. There's nothing, no reason to get upset about it. It's just, uh, it's pathetic, honestly. For those of you who think I'm getting a little bit out of control here by saying that Trump is the Antichrist, there's an article here that was written by Lucy and Mars. It's on VampireAshram.com. That talks about Nostradamus and Jesus both agree Trump is the Antichrist. And it goes into great detail, providing the evidence as to how and why Trump is the Antichrist. And we are actually in the book of Revelation right now. And things are unfolding. Here's a, uh, an article that came out. So Donald Trump... He's posting on his Twitter pictures of Biden hogtied in the trunk of a truck. Hmm. Yeah, I suppose that he's talking about the auto industry, right? Because he is in the back of a U.S. made truck. So no, no, he's not threatening Biden. No, no, with kidnapping him, tying him up and putting him in the trunk of a car or actually the back of a truck. No, no, this is a it's symbolic. It's a metaphor. As Joe Rogan would say, it's a very unfortunate choice of metaphor, but he clearly is talking about the auto industry again, right? You stupid, stupid people. Incredible. Right in front of your face. Bloodbath. No more election 2024. Biden in the back of a truck, hogtied. Hang Mike Pence. Take over the Capitol. 
At what point do you not see what's going on? Now, I know a lot of you, you, you think it's funny. You go, oh, well, that's great. This country sucks. It's all corrupt and blah, blah, blah. Well, if you think this country sucks so badly, go to another country. See how much you like it. I'm sure you'll want to come back here. People all want to come to this country for a reason. There's no arguing with this, no debating it. What other country in the world has a kind of immigration that the United States does? Is there any other place people would want to go? No. So people think, oh, this country is terrible. I just want to tear it down. Yes, yeah, so let's vote for the Antichrist. That's a, a great idea. You think it's bad now? Just wait. Yeah, when uh, Trump makes himself a dictator, starts putting people in FEMA camps, so it's putting all those guillotines to use that they ordered when he starts turning on every other Christian just like Hitler did. What, that's going to be fun? Some people would say, oh, you're being dramatic. It undermines your credibility. I'm not being dramatic. <laughs> this is what's going to happen. Think about it. Now, there's this guy here. Is a... Uh, this is John Williams, I believe is his name. And he has a really great channel. And he talks about economic factors and how government policy affects economic factors. And um, he talks here, I won't play it, about the Baltimore Bridge Collapse. And when we look at the Baltimore Bridge Collapse, we have to understand that one of the vectors of depopulation is starvation and famine. And supply, train, supply chain disruptions are part of that. If you want to trigger a civil war, for example, you want to cause supply chain disruptions in the country. So um, a lot of these supply chain disruptions uh, were being tested already during the recent trials we had. I won't say the word because I don't want to get banned on YouTube. But containers were sitting in ports. Ships were backed up for months. And we begin to see the damage is caused. Well, taking out a port, one of the major ports in the United States, it just slowly boils the frog, so to speak. Now, people say, well, it was just an unfortunate accident. Now, I have no evidence that it was anything beyond an accident. However, I would like to point out that when they bring a boat like this into the port, they use a local captain who's familiar with the procedures and the waters over here to guide the boat in. And if you notice, I didn't see any tugboats guiding this container ship in. Now, I'm not an expert on maritime regulations at this port. Perhaps they don't need tugboats to navigate. But throughout my life, I always see tugboats. So I have to ask myself, where were the tugboats? It just seems highly suspicious. Of course, I have no evidence for this. This is pure conjecture. But I find it very suspicious when a container ship with an experienced pilot suddenly runs into a bridge, takes the whole bridge out, and then blames a mysterious, unexplainable power failure as the cause of it. Well, we lost all power on the boat and everything went completely blacked out. Okay. It, it, sounds, it sounds fishy. Again, I can't say anything with any conclusiveness, but it is very strange. And the reason I bring this out is not so much to speculate on, on the bridge and whether there was a conspiracy involved here or not, but just to point out that supply chain problems tie into one of the vectors of depopulation and they're a major factor in creating civil unrest because when there's no food in the supermarkets, people are on edge. They're much more inclined to loot. Uh, we can see whenever there's a hurricane or any kind of inclement weather coming, how people do runs on supermarkets and super centers and take everything there is in sight. It's just not a, not a good look. Finally here, I want to point out this uh, Russia unleashes well basically they dropped an air fuel bomb on a target in the Ukraine 
So an air fuel bomb such as this, I don't want to go into big tech, technical explanation about how they work. It's sort of like the closest thing you can get to a nuke without using a nuke. And it, the story reminds me of how uh, profilers of serial killers used to say all the time that uh, serial killers usually don't start killing people. They start killing and torturing animals and eventually work their way up to people. So I find it <laughs> sort of similar in my mind that they're getting used to bigger and bigger explosions. So it's going to be very easy to transition over to nukes. <clears throat> and I find that somewhat alarming. So again, I, uh, to get back to the Christian issue for a moment, it's, a, it's a, a very big deal because Christians don't seem to realize just how far afoul most of them have strayed from the commandments. Uh, they don't realize how far they've strayed from Jesus' teachings and that there's a reason that probably 95, 90%, 97% of them end up in hell. These aren't my words. These are actually the words of a, uh, of a very uh, big Christian minister who had a near-death experience and talked about what happened and when he was before judgment and what the Father said to him. So if Jesus didn't show up for his uh, judgment hearing, why is he going to show up for a bunch of murderers who want to <laughs> vote for the Antichrist? It's not going to happen. You're going to go straight down. Uh, I encourage people when they read the book, The Last Harvest, or they listen to the audio book, or they listen to my presentation in Vegas, that really the best thing they can do is to reach out to the Divine Father themselves. Start praying free from the confines of any religion. Religion just keeps you separated from your Creator, the Divine Father. This was one of the reasons that Jesus came to this planet was to chastise the religious leaders for driving people away from God with all of their nonsense. And, well, you see what happened to him. They end up crucifying him. Not a smart move. But for all of you listening to this, there's nothing wrong with just praying. You don't need to be a Christian, you don't need to be a Muslim, you don't need to be a Buddhist, you don't need to have any kind of religion. I was talking to a woman the other day, she said to me, <clears throat> are you religious? I said, I'm not interested in any kind of human religion. She says, neither am I, but I'm all about the Father, and I pray to Him every day. You don't need religion to, to interact with your Creator. And I thought to myself, wow, what a smart woman. If only everybody on the planet was like that, we wouldn't be in the situation we are today. However... It is what it is, but with time being so limited, I would encourage everyone, establish a relationship with the Divine Father now while you still can. Acknowledge His existence. Pray to Him. Ask Him where you fit in in His creation. Ask Him if you're of the light or of the dark. Ask Him how you should align your will with His to better serve Him. What's wrong with that? But the reality is a lot of you, you all hate God. You won't admit it. But you do. So for all of you who think that uh, Jesus can save you, he can't. One of the other big problems with Christianity is they make Jesus equal to, if not more powerful than the Father, and that can't be. If Jesus was more powerful than the Father, then how come in the Garden of Bethesemane he was begging the Father not to make him go through with being crucified? Does that sound like someone who is equal to or more powerful than the Father? No, it doesn't to me. So I, I just think that people need to think about this before it's too late. For some of them, it is too late. For Chad Wright, it's too late. For all his ilk, it's too late. But for the rest of you, what are you going to do? You have free will. Are you going to acknowledge the Divine Father as your creator? Are you going to pray to him? It's up to you. On that note, we'll see you next week.